Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Here I am again standing in my front yard, soaking up somewhat rays into my eyes and on my skin. The sun's been kind of moving in and out between the clouds there, but I'm still barefoot, getting some grounding in, getting some sun hitting me in the eyes, doing all the good stuff for the new experiments for all that. But today, we're going to talk about the tests your doctor should be running to make sure you don't have diabetes, type 2 diabetes. First, let me say welcome to all the new people. I'm glad you're here. If this is your first time here, I'm glad you're here. Don't forget to hit the like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's completely free. If you don't want to do that, at least go down in the comments and say hi, Bob. Or, wow, you're really looking old today, Bob. Whatever it is you want to say. Any interaction with the channel helps things out. And getting the message out that it's never too late to change your life is the biggest purpose of this channel. Yes, I'd like to grow a little bit. Obviously, everybody doing YouTube videos would like to grow a little bit. But... The primary purpose of this channel is to help other people because I suffered for so long not knowing the answers. If I can reach one person a day that is going through what I went through for 40 years and they can find their answers 25, 30 years sooner than I found my answers, then this has been a successful use of my time. For those of you returning to the channel, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I can't say thank you enough. It means the world to me. But what we're going to talk about today is what happens when you go to your doctor's office. If you're going to your doctor's office and getting a standard, you know, he does his standard stuff, you get your blood tested, and within that is a glucose test. You know, what's your what what is the glucose level in your blood. Um, you know, if you haven't been diagnosed as diabetic already, he's probably not going to run an A1C. He's probably just going to do all the standard tests. And since most doctors still recommend you fast 12 to 14 hours before you go to get your blood work done, your glucose is probably going to show up as normal unless you are severely diabetic. And that's where I was at. I didn't get diagnosed for what I'm guessing I was probably diabetic for 15 years or more before I got diagnosed. But what happens is because your insulin keeps, your pancreas keeps producing more and more and more insulin to cover what your blood sugar is, it never shows up on a fasting glucose test until your blood sugar has gone so far out of control that your insulin, your pancreas can no longer create enough insulin to, to keep it under control. And you've been doing damage to your body for as much as decades without even knowing it because every time, you know, every year you go to your doctor, he runs the standard stuff and goes... You're fine. See you next year. And this is such a, a disservice. There are two tests, the fasting insulin and the C-peptide, that could alert us much, much sooner to the fact that we're becoming diabetic, have what they call pre-diabetes, which is kind of a misnomer because if you've got pre-diabetes, you've just got, you've got diabetes that isn't doing as much damage as full-blown diabetes, but you're still doing damage to your system. So what I want to do now, don't take my word for it. Don't listen to me explain it because we all know Bob gets in trouble when he does science. What I'm going to insert here is an excerpt out of the interview I did with Dr. Ken Berry where he explains these tests and what they do. And I'll put the exact question in that I asked so that you can get it all in context. And that is what we're going to do today. We're going to let Dr. Barry explain to us what tests we should be getting at the store. So let's kick over to that. So let's move on. You mentioned 
diabetes in an answer just a little bit ago. Um, do you mind talking for just a few moments about actually what is diabetes? How do they check for it normally? And what should we be doing to check for it? So type 2 diabetes, that makes up about 90% of all the cases of diabetes. So let's talk about type 2 diabetes. The way it's typically diagnosed is if someone has a hemoglobin A1C 6.5 or higher, you can uh, diagnose type 2 diabetes with a, with a one or a two hour uh, glucose tolerance test. You can also diagnose it with a fasting blood sugar that's high enough to meet the criteria for diagnosis, but by far the most common way is to check a hemoglobin A1C. And so if it's 6.5 or higher, then that person has type 2 diabetes by definition. If their A1C is between 5.7 and 6.4, then they are pre-diabetic. And I'd actually like to change that terminology to early diabetes because damage, it's been proven in multiple research studies that even with pre-diabetes, damage is being done, permanent damage. So let's start calling that early diabetes so that you, you, you pay homage to the fact that there is damage being done right now. This is because pre-diabetes sounds like, well, that's, I just need to wake up and slow down. And I'm not harming myself with pre-diabetes. And that's absolutely false. And so what most doctors fail to check when they diagnose somebody with type 2 diabetes is either a fasting insulin test or a C-peptide test. And what these tests tell you is how much insulin you're having to produce from your pancreas in order to get the A1C that you got. And so some people can be hyperinsulinemic for years before their A1C starts to go up. And in my opinion, that's the very first sign of prediabetes or early diabetes is when you become hyperinsulinemic. But most doctors don't check a fasting insulin at all, so they're completely blind to that information. Uh, and then again, if somebody just has a, a, a slightly elevated A1C, say it's 5.9, it doesn't sound terrible. Many doctors would be very, very proud of that but they haven't checked the fasting insulin. And when they check the fasting insulin, they find out that it's 30 or 40 or 50. And so this person's beta cells in their pancreas is actually, they're having to work quadruple time in order to give them an A1C of 5.9. And hyperinsulinemia, and many experts believe it's just as dangerous as hyperglycemia. So having high insulin levels in your blood is probably just as bad for you as having high blood sugar levels in your blood. And indeed, many type 2 diabetics have both high blood sugar and high insulin circulating in the bloodstream each and every day. And that I think that those are the two main drivers for all of the morbidities uh, that come from having type 2 diabetes, whether that's blindness, kidney failure, heart attack, losing uh, toes and feet, or any of the other terrible things that come with type 2 diabetes. Thank you, doctor. Um, so what you're saying is that because of the way they're normally testing for it, you, if, you, if the, you would do the fasting insulin or the C-peptide, you could detect it much earlier Absolutely. than a and standard battery of tests. Also, exactly. And also, Bob, Many doctors for your annual blood work, they'll only check a fasting insulin with regards to checking for type 2 diabetes. And evidently, these doctors have forgotten that you can absolutely have type 2 diabetes. And if you fasted for 12 to 20 hours before you had your blood drawn, your blood sugar can be normal. And so, therefore, if the doctor just checks a BMP, CBC, lipid panel, urinalysis, and you're, everything's normal, they're like, oh, yeah, you're fine. When in reality, you actually, your A1C 6.5 and your, uh, your insulin level's 20 or 30. You're exceedingly unhealthy, metabolically speaking, but your doctor is truly blind to that because they didn't check the labs that they needed to check to make that discovery. Thanks for watching today, folks. I hope you enjoyed that quick little video. Don't forget, get out there, be 1% better. Today, tomorrow every day. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you in the next one.